Okay, in this video we're going to look at linear and absolute value inequalities. Uh, so let's just start off with what an inequality is. So basically when we've got uh, signs like this, this, so that's greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, those are inequality signs, okay, as opposed to the equal sign. Um, so statements like 7 is greater than 2 is a true statement. 7 is greater than 2. And something like negative 3 is less than negative 1. That is also a true statement. And so is negative 7 is less than or equal to 5. So it satisfies one of the conditions that it's less than. Okay, so negative 7 is less than 5. It's not equal to but that's okay. So these are just true statements. Now if you wanted to solve this in equation here, so something like uh, x is greater than 3, well that is itself the solution to that equation. All x values that are greater than 3. Well we have some notations that we can use here. So we've got uh, this interval notation here that looks like a coordinate of a point. So meaning that it's two things with a in brackets with a comma between them, but it means something different. Okay, so this means that it's the interval of all real numbers. Okay, so x is contained in that. So that little sign here means contained in. Uh, so x is contained in the interval from 3 to infinity, and the round bracket means it doesn't include 3. And you could never have include infinity because infinity doesn't exist. Okay, so that's one way. We could also look at this as a number line. Okay, so if there is a number line, there's zero. Well, the solution to this is if that is three, then we have a hollow circle here and an arrow going towards infinity. So from three to infinity. Okay. We had something like x is greater than or equal to 3. Well, then this changes a little bit here. We have another notation where you can include 3, and that is we have a square bracket. Okay, so 3 to infinity. Infinity still always has a round bracket next to it. Okay, and the number line approach to this is right here. So instead of a hollow dot, we have a solid dot, and that means 3 to infinity, including infinity. Okay. Now, if we had to solve something a little bit more complex, if we had something like 2x is less than 6, well, we do the same thing here as we do with normal equations. Divide both sides by 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, and that implies that x is less than 3, which makes sense. Okay? And that means that you have the <clears throat> an interval notation. You'd have um, negative infinity to 3. Okay? So that would be the solution to that. x is contained in that. Okay? Um, something like 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 9. Well, in this one, we would do the same sort of thing as we did in the above. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. And that means you have 3x is greater than or equal to 14. And then we're going to divide by 3, okay, and we'll have x is greater than or equal to 14 over 3. And that would give us the set of square brackets here, 14 over 3 to infinity. Okay. Now what if we had this one? This is a... Okay, so this one here is a little bit different. Negative x is greater than or greater than 7. Okay. Well, 
that doesn't mean x is greater than 7. And you can't multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide by negative 1 and say x is greater than negative 7 because if you tested that, so if you said x was greater than negative 7, then you'd have, um, if you plugged in 0 in here, well, negative 0 is just 0, and 0 is not greater than 7. So it doesn't work. So you have to almost think of it like it's flipping it on this, on the number lines. Okay, so the negative in front of the x is like it's flipping it over on the number lines. And so what actually happens here is if you divide by or multiply by a negative, okay, so divide by negative 1, you'll get x is less than negative 7. And if you check that out here, then it works. So a number that's less than negative 7 would be negative 8. The negative of negative 8 is 8, and that is greater than 7. Okay, so when you're, you're trying to uh, do these kinds, you can multiply or divide by a negative when it's in front of x, but then you have to flip the inequality. Okay, so when multiplying or dividing by a negative, you need to flip the inequality. Okay, so you're gonna flip this. And that's really the only difference between equations and inequations for this stuff, uh, for the procedures. Okay, um, so if you wanted to look at something uh, a little different, like x minus 2 is greater than 3x plus 8. Okay. So to keep things simple, make sure that you have the positive x on the side that you want it on. Okay. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides here. Minus x minus x. And I'll have negative 2 is greater than 2x plus 8. And I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Okay. And then I'll have negative 10 is greater than 2x. Okay. Bring that up here. And then divide by 2 on both sides. And I'd have negative 5 is greater than x. Or we can write it this way x is less than negative 5, okay? And that means x is contained in the set of negative infinity to negative 5 with round brackets, okay? Um, we could also have some double inequalities. Okay, so let's look at that. So if you had something like um, negative 7 is less than or equal to x plus 5 is less than or equal to uh, say 9, then you can solve this as well. Same thing you're going to subtract 5, but from each piece, okay? So then you'd have negative 12 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4, okay? And then the way you would write this set is x is contained in, well, you're going to have negative 12 and 4. Okay, so that is x is between those two. Um, you could have the same thing if you had negative 3 is less than uh, 2x plus 9, which is less than or equal to um, 15, or something like that. So in this case, you're going to subtract 9 from each side, 
okay, or each piece, and you're going to get negative 12 less than 2x, which is less than, so 15 minus 9 is, is 6, okay, and now you can divide every piece by 2. Okay, and then you get negative 6 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 3. And this means that x is contained in this interval. It's going to be negative 6 with a round bracket and 3 with a square bracket. Okay, so that is taking a look at these linear inequalities and inequalities now that have um, absolute values in it, well, it's a little bit different. Okay, so absolute value. Well, with absolute value, we've got um, absolute value of x means that um, the result is positive. Okay, so, so what this implies is no matter what x is okay, in sine, okay, so in sine like positive or negative, the absolute value of x is positive. Okay? So it takes every number and makes it positive. So absolute value of 3 equals 3. But the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. Okay? So if we want to solve for something like this, absolute value of x is less than 2. Okay. Well, if the absolute value of x is less than 2, well, we need to look at positive and negative numbers for x where its absolute value is less than 2. And that implies that negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 2. Okay. So basically, if I absolute value these negative numbers here that are greater than negative 2, I'll get something less than positive 2. Okay? And another way of looking at this is negative 2 to 2 in that interval notation. Okay? Now if we look at it another way, x is, or absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 2, well then we have to look at it another way. So the um, we're looking at numbers that are greater than 2 and equal to 2, but also less than negative 2. Because if you take the absolute value of negative 4, you're going to get 4. And that's greater than 2. So this one means that x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is greater than or equal to positive 2. And this needs to be written in two pieces. So negative infinity to negative 2 with square brackets or 2 to infinity. Okay. So these are things that we need to look at for absolute values. And that's it for this video.